Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. So through the miracle of the internet, I was able to locate some new old stock glass lens covers for the lights that go on here to show which direction is engaged. How uh, that's really necessary, but you know, it makes it look better than these busted out holes. Now, according to the book, my Monarch manual, it says that those are wired and it should be 130, or 115 volt, the same as the controls. But uh, when I check it with my meter, that's not what I get. Unfortunately, I'd already ordered some LED bulbs that are supposed to be four pilot lights of 115 volt. So I don't know if these are going to work or not. I already took this plate here off and put an LED bulb in it that uh, lights up inside the headstock so you can see the oiling. See, you say 100 to 120 volt. Um, probably won't work, but we'll try them anyway. And so we'll fire up the face converter and we'll see if anything will light up. It says push the test on. Yeah, I guess it does light up. No, maybe these will actually work. Put the lens covers on, make it pretty. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. Yeah, these are way bigger, so. Here's the switch, and it, I went by uh, what I found in the Monarch manual for this as far as what these indicator lamps are supposed to be. Clearly that's not right, so if anybody has some of these that are this size, uh, let me know. I don't know if it, I got these off eBay. And they said it's what they fit, but maybe that's not the case. Obviously, these are two different sizes. This is this is probably like three quarter, and this is like an inch. So I guess uh, let's see if it'll start. Well, I guess I'm gonna start at one end and try and work my way down. Straightening this thing out some, so I'm we'll gonna get my uh, sledgehammer and torch and do some heating and beating and see what I can get done here about straightening this up. So.
Well, I've got it looking a lot better than it was. That's for sure. Lots of heating and lots of beating. So I'm working on welding this now. Got that tear there welded up. And I got this big gap crack over here. So I'm gonna fire up the torch, try and beat that down, and then weld it up. Bottle tool in the shop right there, the torch. Well, it's a lot better than it was, but I'd say I got a, another whole day probably working on this to get it straightened out. Uh, it's definitely closer, but still not to my satisfaction. So I'll have to keep at it, but for now, I've you know spent a day on this, so uh, it's time to go in. Bailey's already left, so I'll go in and come back and heat it and beat it some more. So, well, I need to see if I can't get a little further with this chip pan. It's certainly come a long way from where it was, but a quick walk around. Still got a little hump up in there. I could try and get out. That was the end I did all the straightening on. Looks a lot better than it did when it started. Need some welding out here in the corner, and I've got to weld up that hole that was punched through it. And I got a little wave in it there. And this side's getting closer. That there was pushed clear up against the headstock. So I managed to get it jacked back down and straighten out some. But uh, this out here is all broke loose. So that's what I gotta do next is pull these pans out of here and see if I can't get this sump part straightened out back here. Get it straight and get it welded up. So I'll take this apart and see what we're going to do. This is whatever I think was stopping up that motor. Stuff looks like the asphalt stuff that you put on roofs. And it's all over this machine. Off the roof and the building was caving in and all this come down on it while it was sitting in there. If this was something they were machining. So, but regardless, it's full of it. thing about big machines is they're a big mess that's bucket 10 and there's probably two more in here to dig out so go get rid of this and I'll be back clean some more well I've got it mostly cleared out and there's the mess I got to straighten out got a bunch of broken braces bunch of bent stuff uh, it's nowhere close to level so I gotta try and get this thing pounded down and straightened out so that uh, I can go in there and weld those braces and stuff back and maybe get this thing halfway close to like it should be and back to where it'll hold cooling again. Uh, this big machine, the cooling will be pretty much a must have on it, taking heavy cuts. It'll certainly do a whole lot better. and. Uh, it does a decent job of helping keep things from rusting. If you use good coolant, uh, running on everything. So I'll uh, get the jack back over here and get to pressing on this thing and start, I guess, in the high spots and work my way down and see what I come up with. <laughs> 